Reports of transcatheter septal myocardial ablation in patients with hypertrophic obstructive cardiomyopathy have shown considerable differences in outcome. Now in circulation cardiovascular interventions, there is a report on the long-term outcome of more than 300 procedures performed in four Scandinavian centers. The initial results, not surprisingly, were very good. Left ventricular outflow tract gradient was reduced from 58 to 12 millimeters mercury at one year, and the proportion of patients with syncope was reduced from 18 to 2 percent. The proportion of patients in New York Heart Association class 3 or 4 was reduced from 94 to 21 percent. All treatment effects remained stable during the follow-up. In hospital mortality was very low at 0.3 percent, and the 1, 5, and 10-year survival rates were 97, 87, and 67 percent, respectively. Thus, the main findings included a low in-hospital mortality and a low complication rate. Survival after ablation was only predicted by age and was comparable to the survival of an age and sex mage matched general population. But of course, there was always a hooker. The symptomatic benefits were sustained, but in one-fifth of the patients, significant dyspnea persisted despite successful reduction of the LVOT obstruction, and in one of seven patients, there was a need for repeat intervention for recurrence. In addition, advanced heart block occurred during 34 percent of procedures. This finding was comparable to those reported from other ablation centers, but in this study, 20 percent of the patients needed a permanent pacer compared to less than 10 percent in other centers, and this high rate of pacer need might have been due to the volume of alcohol injected. The authors are honest and admit that changes in the technique might have produced better outcomes. The size of their cohort and the death rate limit the analysis of difference in survival between patients and the age and sex match background population, but it should be noted that there was a trend toward a reduced survival in the ablation-treated patients. What does all this mean? Well, initial outcomes are pretty good, but some patients need pacemakers and some need reinterventions. Nevertheless, on balance, transcatheter septal ablation seems to have merit in long-term follow-up considering the surgical or medical alternatives. I'm Peter Block, and this is a CardioSource Heart Minute.